How do you know when the time is right to euthanize your dog or cat? Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. Click there to subscribe. Hit the bell to sign up for notifications. And then we click the link directly in the box below. I can send you a copy of my free book. When is the right time to euthanize your dog or cat? Yeah, it's a hard question. There isn't one right answer and it really varies based on the pet parent, based on the pet. Like honestly, deciding when to euthanize your dog or cat is one of the most difficult decisions you're ever going to have to make. As a veterinarian, I got asked this so many times in practice. I mean, clients asking like, Doc, what do you think is now the time? A veterinarian who runs an animal hospice in California has published a quality of life scale. Her quality of life scale is abbreviated by HHHHHMM. I mean, here they are running this hospice. They're caring for animals palliatively. So these may be animals that have cancer, um, these life ending diseases and you know they're assessing them daily you know judging them based on this criteria which i think i personally find really helpful and i think so will you too at our hospice the patients are scored on a scale of zero to ten so ten being ideal the first h stands for hurt is there adequate pain control so they would score it from zero being there's really poor no pain control to ten being ideal pain control Just look at your own dog or cat um, are they in pain? Are you able to manage their pain? You know, if yes, maybe they're pretty comfortable. Maybe they're a seven. If they're extremely painful, like my last dog, Lewis, he had this uh, really painful mouth tumor. I wasn't able to adequately manage his pain at the end. You know, he sort of got down to sort of a three. The next stage, it stands for hunger. I mean, is your pet, do they have an appetite? Are they eating enough? Are they able to maintain enough calories? The next H after that stands for hydration. Is your pet able to drink on his or her own? Are you able to provide you know, supplementary fluid, like AIE sub-Q fluids? If not, if they're extremely dehydrated, you're not able to maintain enough fluid, you know, they're going to score very low you know, on that 0 to 10 scale. Next H after that stands for hygiene. It means daily, it means you know, making sure your pet is clean. You know, they're not sitting in their own feces, they're not sitting in their own urine. And if you're not able to maintain adequate hygiene, I mean, they're going to score really low on that scale. And, you know, it's giving an indicator like maybe now is almost the time. Last H on the scale, it stands for happiness. Like, is your dog or your cat, are they excited to see you? You know, does, does she lift her head? Does she wag her tail? I mean, are they interactive with others? I mean, if your pet generally seems happy and you know your dog, your cat better than anyone else, like you really know, are they happy or not? So if they seem really happy, eh, maybe it's a six or a seven, like now's not the time. But they're just not responsive anymore. You come in and like your head's down, like maybe it's a two or a three on that scale. The next part of the quality of life scale is this first M and it stands for mobility. I mean, is your pet able to stand up, walk around, or maybe even move around with assistance? I mean, how mobile or not are they? And you're, once again, you're going to rate that on a zero to 10 scale. A zero meaning they're almost impossible for them to get up versus a 10 meaning they're really mobile. My last dog, Jesse, who had to be euthanized, he, you know, he was a super active dog. He had degenerative myelopathy and it progressed to the point where he couldn't get up, you know, so he was down to a one. And ultimately, you know, that's what made, was a big part in helping me make that decision to euthanize him. And the last part of the scale, the second M, stands for more good days than bad days. Ultimately, it's the bond that your dog and cat has with you. And you know, are they responding? Like, are you seeing them, you know, being able to have any type of quality of life, to interact with you, and just to have a general good day? When you're starting to see more bad days than good days, then that decision is starting to be made for you. You know, I, I kind of go back on my own animals. Unfortunately, I've had to euthanize a number in the past. I think of my, you know, Jesse, when he was euthanized, he had like this huge spirit, he super bonded to me. But that last few days, all of a sudden, like it became, you know, more bad days than good days. And there's about two or three days there where he just wasn't responding. He was just not happy, uncomfortable in different ways. And I would say I had more bad days than good days. And ultimately, that's what helped me make that decision. You then total all the different rankings, you know, and if it adds up to 35 or more, 
than the hospice at the time. They say, and then there's acceptable quality of life and we should continue palliative care. And I think it's just a good sort of overall guidance for you to look at your dog or your cat and how they're doing overall in a little bit more of an objective way than just subjective and to get a better sense like, okay, this is, they have still a decent quality of life. I've looked at all these different parameters. They're still in eating, they're still drinking, they're still hydrated, they're still somewhat mobile, they're still somewhat responsive. Okay, it's okay to wait. Versus not, like you don't have adequate pain control. They're no longer able to move around. They've really, you know, started to eat less. They're not drinking enough, maybe dehydrated. They have more bad days and good days than maybe, you know, now is the time. I'll put a link to this quality of life scale in the description box and I actually find it really helpful and I wish I had that in veterinary practice but now you guys have it and obviously please share that with your veterinarian. I hope this is sort of helping you make that decision or not and be a little bit more objective about it and you know feel better about the decision of when or when is not the right time to euthanize your dog or cat. Thanks for watching, it's Dr. Jones.